our hands and send them to the Yes, God, we've come to clap our hands and give them praise Everybody in the house, say Clap our hands and send them to the Yes, God, we've come to clap our hands and give them praise Everybody in the house, say We've come to clap our hands and send them to the We've come to clap our hands and give them praise We've come to clap our hands and give them praise Give them glory, glory, glory We've come to clap our hands and give them praise Give them glory, glory, glory We've come to clap our hands To do our dance and give them praise Everybody in the house say Come on, we've come to do our dance everybody amen god bless you god bless you we back we back here we back here 
Hey man, I just wanted to say good evening to everybody that's on the radio, listening on the the Timmy Radio broadcast tonight. Mm-hmm. Man to man talk back the talk up show. We're just so thankful for everybody just tuned in uh, tonight. We're back, Amen. We're praying that everybody's all is well. Uh, we see people getting their stimulus checks, Amen. I didn't even know, but it got mine. Lord have mercy, boy. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory, glory, amen. But we're just so thankful to be back. Our numbers, amen, went down, uh, you know, because we had some issues with the equipment, technical issues, We, you know, with the quarantine and things of that sort. You know, we jumped down from 600, you know, to 400 to 300 down. You know, I think last week was only 100. So we need the numbers to come back up, guys, because, you know, we, we want this to go around the globe. We, we want it to go viral uh, like some, some other stuff would. So we want you guys, we need you guys help. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about the power of prayer. I mean, I think it's a, a, a just conversation tonight because we are in a time that we're seeing more people. We're seeing more people that have never prayed, pray. Amen. And we see a lot of people that, that had not got on their knees before in their life begin to get on their knees. Come on, somebody. That's, that is so awesome. I mean, even though it took this, you know, it took a, a pandemic. It took this academic, this, 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 this virus to, and, and people losing their life to, to get people to come and get on their knees. But the Bible said by his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Amen. And, and you know, so we, we got the call on, but at, 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 at all instances, man, it's just, you know what? We are in a time that we never seen before. Ain't nobody on this live. Nobody on the radio has ever seen this type of, uh, of sickness in this uh, magnitude ever. I mean, in our generation. You know, some people, I mean, if they're 100 years old or 100 plus, you know, they might have seen some things. But, you know, we, this is our era, you know. And, and, and so we never seen such, such you know, uh, 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 as we, we see now. I mean, you know, you look talking about hundreds of people dying in New York and California and some of these places. But anyway, we want to say good evening to our co-host. God bless you, man of God. Pastor Carl, God bless you. God bless you, sir. Amen, Pastor. Amen. We thank you so much, y'all. Again, share this on your Facebook page. I mean, share it. Invite your family. Invite everybody on your page to tune in tonight. The power of prayer. There's something about praying it, it, that moves the very heart of God when we begin to pray. Not just pray out of malice. Not just praying because we want something. But when we are in dire need, you know, a, 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 a better, better, for a better term, uh, we should be praying daily. Amen. We should be talking to the Lord daily. But but we are seeing now that 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 when we pray, amen, for people that are sick and, 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 and things begin to, to move. But before we get into it, Pastor, as always, man, go ahead and, and, and say uh, give us a word of prayer, brother. Amen, Father. We are so grateful this evening. Yes, sir. Father God, we honor you, Lord God. We bless your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes,
Yes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Again, for those that just tuned in, I want to say good evening, everybody. Uh, let, let me go to let me go here to greet everybody that's on so far. Uh, Evangelist Reed, we want to say good evening to you, ma'am. God bless you for tuning in tonight. Minister Mile, God bless you for tuning in tonight. Woman of God, amen. Uh, my sister Wanda, she's tuned in. God bless you. Amen. Uh, my cousin Yvonne is in here. God bless you. Cuz, how you doing tonight? Amen. Minister Chris is in the house, and I know he got something to say about the power of prayer. Amen. We want your comments. Elder Katie Armstrong, God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Amen. Uh, my my sister-in-law, uh, hey, good... <laughs> Natalie, not, not treat, so I always mess her name up. <laughs> Ann, I, I just got to call you Ann, okay? Ann, good evening to you. I always mess your name up, but I'm just going to start saying Ann uh, like I've always said it. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. My wife, Pastor Carl, is in. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, Sister Annette is in here tonight. Amen. Uh, uh, let's see here. And... Trying to think with somebody else. Oh, uh, 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 Sister Cynthia, First Lady Cynthia, tune in tonight. Amen. Brother Brian, Brother Brian, uh, Perry's in tonight. Um, you know, I don't want to miss anybody, but oh, Apostle Branch is in tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for all of you tuning in tonight. Just because we know that, that, that there's something amazing about uh, uh, praying. It, it, it's something uh, powerful about praying. And, and this is such a time that, that, that now we're seeing people that ain't never prayed, pray. Uh, that, that, that God is going to get our attention one way or other. And, and so we're in a time where we are, we are seeing the sick getting healed because of prayer, you know, and, and we're seeing the hungry being fed because of prayer. We, we seeing that, that when we pray because we don't have money to pay for our bills and, and, and they close the doors on our businesses. But when we begin to pray, we get unexpected checks and things to come through the mail because, you know, that's the God that we serve. It ain't saying we sitting around in fear. We're not sitting here with, with biting our nails off. We're not sitting here about the you know, cut somebody's head off. We're not trying to rob and steal and cheat our way. We just saying, you know what, Lord, we, we know you said in your word that you were going to never leave us nor forsake us, that you were going to provide our need. You were going to provide shelter for us, just like you did with the children of Israel, our ancestors. God, you said you were going to take care of us, God. We're going to not lean to our own understanding, but we're going to trust you and acknowledge you in all our ways. That for uh, every word that you have said, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe that, that even when we don't see it, I'm going to believe it. And and pray, you got to have faith to pray. You got to believe the prayer that you're praying. Amen. You, you, I just can't pray and not believe it. You know, a lot of people are praying, but they don't believe what they're praying. And, and, and some people, you know, are just like, um, you know, Thomas was when Thomas had to go and feel Jesus. He had to go examine him because he just couldn't take his word, take his word for it. Some people got to see it happen. You know, they pray it, but they can't see if they can't see it, then they don't believe it uh, to the fullness of their heart. But but we got to believe this thing. You know, we got to sit back and say, you know what, God, you at least allow us to be able to still eat. You still allow our lights to stay on. You still allow this. And this is what God is requiring of, the, uh, requiring of, the, of us is to pray. That's our communication. That's how we communicate with God is when we're praying. I mean, we got to continue to pray to the master, you know, and when we pray, you know, there's something about the, that that moves that that prayer moves the heart of God. It, it, it touches his his heart when you you cry out, you know, to him, you know, praying and the power to pray. For those that despise you, these are some of the these are some of the outline points that we're going to cover tonight. The power to pray for those that despise you, the power to pray for yourself. That's big right there. That 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 that's something that y'all should catch. Those that don't know, it's power. The power to pray for yourself because a lot of times we see, we ask people, you know, pray for me, you know, pray for me, pray for me, which is nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I'm saying that when you pray for yourself, oh, when you get into that spirit realm with God and it's you and God, 
And when you talk to him, see, I can talk to him for you and he can answer my prayer on my behalf for you. But every once in a while, it should be good that God hears from you. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's like, you know, every once in a while, it, it's good for a son and a daughter to, to, to talk to the mom and the daddy. Every, you know, uh, uh, seek counsel every once in a while, you know, uh, uh, go to him every once in a while. You know, and need, you, when, you, when you really need to, to get a, a better understanding on something, you know, go to your parents. Therefore, our our heavenly Father, when we going through stuff, we we got to we got to get to our own place with Him, cause He recognized each and every one of us individually. Amen. He 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 identifies each one of us that's on this broadcast tonight. He identified you as you, Pastor Carl as him, and me and myself, my wife as herself. So 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 every once in a while it's good to 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 get down on on these old rusty knees and and, and and take a little time out with God. This is the this is the this is the thing that we got to get to. Amen cuz I, I you know I'm not proud I'm not I'm not pr- I'm not that I'm like that proud of a person that I can't lay down on the floor. Amen. I can't get on my knees, you know. And, and so praying, you know, the power to pray. It it moves it makes things happen in the atmosphere. It changed your situation. You know, it, that's what it does for you. Prayer. God hears your prayer. Even when you don't see it, your faith is going to say, you know what? I know he heard it. But in the meantime, while you don't see it, God is giving you strength to endure until he make it manifest in your life. Though you can see it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Yes. Right, right. Do you know what it is to have a world voice? 
Right. Do you know the assurance of heaven or not? But we, we pray for stuff that's not in God's will. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Amen. Amen, Pastor. And you're right. You know, uh, we don't need to pray for, uh, you know, self, uh, those things of the world, those carnal things, you know, even though we do it, even though so, Lord, I, I, I just wish, you know, you can bless me with a big whole house. You know, we do those things, but we, we got to ask the Lord if it's in his will, Lord. You know, I, 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 my heart desire these things because you are, you said in your word that you were going to give me the desires of my heart. But Lord, if it's in thy will, see that that makes a difference there because a lot of times we'll pray for something and, and, and then we don't really know the consequence. Like Pastor was saying about, you know, people, you know, winning lottery money or, or, or getting a, 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 a substantial amount of money, you know, but they but they but, the uh, you know, a, a fool in his money will surely depart. And that's the word of God. And, and, and surely a fool in his money will surely depart because they don't know how to take they don't know how to take care of it. Because one, they didn't seek good counsel about it, you know, and, and I said, you know what, I, I want to, I want nice things, you know, but I said, Lord, I don't want them, I don't want to have nothing that, that will make me uh, come against you or, or, or lead, lead me away from you. That's the point that we got to get to when we pray for things, say, Lord, if it's in our will, but Lord, if I get these things, Lord, let me not uh, walk away from you. This is the thing that we ought to be talking to God as we're talking now in the conversation, you know, and, and so prayer, you know, uh, wise prayer, you know, you know, cause God hears you. God knows, you know, if you want a little bit extra or you, you know, you work and check the check and you say, Lord, you know, I'm really tired of living check by check, you know, Lord, we just want enough in our, to, to take care of our bills and have a little bit to be comfortable where we won't have to be living check to check. God, yeah, that, you know, God sees that, but if you ask for something, and, and and you really don't know what you're really asking for. You know, you got the young kids out here and they want these they want these high powered car, uh, race cars and they test them out to the to the match which not knowing the power under the hood and end up having a crash because they wanted this sports car which they wasn't really ready for it or mature for it, but they asked for it. You, right. Exactly. And so there and that's another thing. You know, uh, I, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm, I'm gonna put myself in it. I, I love, I love a, a BMW. That's always been one of my cars since I was a kid. I love it. I, I, the last few years, I, I can say actually the last 10 years, maybe I really, really like the Mercedes too, but, and I like the Maserati, which is one of my favorites, my Maserati. But here's the thing. When I get those things, I'm going to be able to take care of the maintenance and be able to p take care of, of it's not going to put me in a, in a stressful place. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I want to want you to see. See, get, getting those things is fine, but if it puts you in a stressful place, I mean, you, you know, you, 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 you come, you, you, you take it out of this bill to make a car payment. You taking out, you know, you cutting half of your light bill money to take, to pay a, a payment. That that's that's putting too much work on you, but but if you if you got the money to 
society to be able to take care of the maintenance and you know and, and you can live comfortable still then fine but a lot of people get these things beyond the head they want the big house on the hill they want the upstairs because and, and that's another thing and i know this is awful what we're talking about with the prayer but can you imagine some of these wives out here pushing their husbands so hard to get the house on the hill the two and three story house because their their classmate got it their classmate got it and they love what the classmate got the the big house and but the classmate making six figures and they they real comfortable and but but Mr. Woody over here he 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 driving trucks he's okay but he can't afford to give you that stuff right now but you but you but you wear him so bad to he to he 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 give in and then guess what happened something come up down the road now you can't afford it we know people that got these nice houses, they want to move a nice neighborhood, which I'm not saying that them is wrong with it. But what what happens when you can't afford to pay that sixteen to seventeen hundred dollar mortgage? Because and, and, and you know what I'm saying, and you don't want to downside because you're like, uh, uh-uh, they're gonna look at me funny. You know, I I got this big house, they're gonna look at me funny. But but then you you prayed on that thing, but but then you didn't get an answer. Watch this. There are some that you pray for, and it's not really an answer from God. It's you doing it. And now it causes you to go into a sparrow and heart, hardship and, and stress because you got something before God was ready to give it to you. Mm. You, you, you couldn't wait on God to give it to you. So you said, you know what? I got Marie for a check, but you don't have a job. But I've been praying and saying, Lord, you know, we, we just trying to get by. I need something. And you got the check, but then you don't do not, You don't do the wise thing. You think about looking at looking at some of the people we know that look back on their life back in those days and those women, those women that, you know, those women that might have some kids and they were getting back five and six and seven thousand dollars uh, refund check because, you know, they had the dependence. They worked a little bit and they got a big income. You know, you think about those back in the day that if they had invested that money. You know, they invested their money and they could have bought property. They could have bought homes. You know, they could have used that five thousand and and just and saved up for five years. Now they got twenty five thousand. You just think five, just five years of saving that money, that that refund check money every year, January, February, you get that big check and you didn't touch it because you still live every month without it until your refund came. So why touch it? But yet you miss you you did the wrong thing. You splurged. You bought clothes. You bought Xboxes and Playstations and went out to eat. And you spent all that money that you said, Lord, I need I need something. And he said, Okay, I'm gonna see what she's gonna do with this again. Well, he already knew what you're gonna do with it. You're gonna blow it because when May came, you didn't have no money. So we can't pray for things. You know, we got to pray. Say, Lord, you know, I, I had to get into the habit of doing it because hey. I was praying for stuff because I like nice things, you know, but I said I had to get I had to get to a place to say, Lord, if it's in that wheel, because I don't want nothing that's going to cause me to lose my soul. I don't want nothing to cause me to, to to lose my connection with him. So so you got to learn that that's the, the power to pray uh, uh, specific prayers and know how to pray. But I'm going to read this and I'm going to give that back to Pastor Carl, because we 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 are on some we were on some of these uh, prayer groups, some of these prayer lines praying in the morning. I, uh, 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 praying, you know, early in the morning for people in a set, in a seat, in a seating for folk, you know, praying, but, 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 but we know that there's some people that they don't tell us has recovered from COVID-19. There's a whole bunch of, of people. There's a big percentage of people that have been, uh, tested positive for the virus, but they have got cures, but yet they still saying that they working on a cure. So we have to believe that there's still some people out here that's praying for their sick and the sick is getting healed and the sick are recovering and and God is making a way. He's answering prayer. But I'm going to read to you James the fifth in the fifth chapter of James. Um, oh, verse 15, James five and 15 says, and the prayer of faith. You see what I said at the beginning of the of the broadcast? That you that you just got to have a prayer. You can pray, but you got to have faith on believing what you pray. Amen. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. You see that? That's powerful right there. The prayer of faith. See, the power of, 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 of prayer, the prayer of those that have faith to believe that even if they don't see you well, they know that God can heal you. 
the 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 and and the prayer and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. That's the glory of God. That if you are really praying for those in your family that are, are going astray, the the beauty of it is right here. Because it's our faith in the prayer that we're praying over the sick, not just physical, but the sin sick. Praying for them that that in that day that the Lord will raise them up. And and if they committed sin here, Jesus is saying they shall be forgiven him. Oh, we're going to pray the prayer of faith today. Amen. Praying that believing. We believe what we're praying. Some people say, uh, I don't know why I pray, Pastor. Have you ever heard that, Pastor? People say that you, you know, I don't know why I'm praying for God. Don't hear my prayer. I don't never get a I don't never get a breakthrough. I don't never get a blessing. You you don't get a blessing and you don't get your breakthrough because you lost faith in what you prayed. <laughs> you prayed the words, but your heart didn't say it otherwise. What what your mouth say. And your heart got to line up together. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. 
Amen. Yes. That's right. Right. Amen, Pastor. That's right. Never let anything bring you out of that place with God. Never, never let somebody take you out of out of your out of your uh, your 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 commune with God. And, and so you know, we got to walk with faith, but we gotta have, we gotta believe. We just gotta believe what we're what we're saying. We gotta believe what we're what we're teaching and talking and walking. You know, because see, people gonna look at us and say, "Oh, where they faith at? You going crazy?" You know, I, I imagine, I guarantee you, it was some church folk fighting over tissue, you know? And, and so, you know, I, I, I ain't going to start. I ain't going to start it. <laughs> I ain't going to start it right there. I ain't going to start it. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to what Minister, Minister Miles said, going back to what we talked about with praying and make sure we asking God if it's in his will, God, you know, God, I want this, but God, it, am I going to be able to handle it? And show me. And he will. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be smooth. If you get something and it ain't, you ain't gotta go through a bunch of hoops and, and hurdles and, 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 and optical courses and all that stuff, then you know. But Minister Miles said if we if we get things before before we are ready for them, uh we will we will uh misuse, abuse it, or lose it. And that's the truth. That is so true. You know, now, now on the flip side, now we know <clears throat> <clears throat> because you got faith and trust and believe in God, things can be taken away too. Because you know there might be some unbelievers in here that see our stuff be taken away, and we're believers. We got to go into account with Job was an upright, righteous man that his all his things were taken away. But at the end, because he endured through the end of the race, he he God restored double that he that he lost. So just like us. It, 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 it's like, you know, if we lose something that God gave, then then I've got to believe that God is going to give an increase or give something better, give more room, give more space. You know, if, if you got to leave from where you were, your home, then you got to leave your home. You might get a better deal. God has already heard your cry. You've been saying, I don't know how I'm going to budget my bills. I don't know how. But but you still holding on to that big house payment, that big rent. <clears throat> and you're still trying to struggle to pay it, but God is wanting to show you that you might have to come down a few inches or a few feet. You might, you know, cut off a, a, a half bathroom. You might just get two bathrooms instead of two and a half, or you might just go down to two bathrooms or one and a half. But and your square footage might be cut down, but you got more, a little bit more space room. And guess what? You ain't stressed out. <laughs> Because if you follow, if you follow him, but you try to hold on to that stuff, you praying, you know, and God said, you know what, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you a way out of, out of debt. You know, you be praying, Lord, get me out of debt. But yet you, 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 you hate to leave your stuff. You hate to sell it. You, you, you know, if you own your home, you're paying, you, you're paying a mortgage. And here's the thing you be praying to Lord. Okay. Well, guess what? God would give you, he would give you uh, this. He would give you to sell your home. Even if you owe mortgage, cause you can do that. You can go out here if you owe, you know, eighty thousand dollars left on it. You can say, okay, I'm gonna try to get ninety five, right? And then you take the eighty and pay off your mortgage, pay off the home, and you keep what the fifteen thousand, right? 
Now you got 15,000. Now you can downsize at a payment because you're going there with 15,000 of, of cash money to put down on a, on a, on a less of cost of house. Now you ain't paying a 12, a 14, $1,500 a month, uh, 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 mortgage. Now you can get something down to eight seventy five or nine twenty five. Now you be like, Lord, have mercy. But you still trying to hold on, but you've been praying. So you got to work the prayer. You got to work it. You got to, you not be scared. See, some people have been praying pastor, but they scared to move the feet. That's another thing that you, you, you don't believe what you, you don't believe what you're praying. You know? And so, uh, going back to another, um, comment, um, El Elder Katie, Elder Katie said, it's okay to have nice things. And that's what we said at the beginning of this, you know, God said, I will give you the desires of your heart. God knows what we want before we want it. <laughs> he knows what we like before we like it. Come on. It, but God wants us to have things, but don't make God of a mere t materialistic God. That's right. We cannot make God like a genie in the box. You can't just go and just rub on God, rub on God and say, okay, I want this house. Boom. I want this job. Boom. I want this increase on the job. Boom. I, I want this. Boom. I'm going to be, you know, all of this stuff. And then you don't, you don't, you know, don't have really a, a, no connection with God because you just using him to get as long as he given to you. You good. Have y'all ever seen the kids pastor? That, that as long as you give it to him, oh, mommy, I love you so much. Daddy, you just the best daddy. <laughs> Ain't they, you hear them young kids? <laughs> young kids said, daddy, you just the best daddy. <laughs> you get them everything they want. But guess what? <laughs> when you say, you know what? You ain't going to have it. <laughs> oh, daddy, I don't like you. You're not my friend. Daddy, you're not good. You're not nice. But as long as you give, 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 give to your kids, guess what? You become a materialistic father. You become a materialistic mother. You giving your kids the the all of this stuff that they you know want, but they don't want to listen to your rule. They don't want to do right in school. That's we can't treat God like that. We can't treat God like that. You know, we just pray, Lord. Uh, I want this this kind of car. Oh, the Lord give it to me. Oh, He good. Uh, Lord, I want this, but I don't want to go to church. I don't want to pray. I don't want to help nobody out. It's always about me. God, I need you to open that door. I want this. I want this big old four, four bedroom house. I, I want. I want a big front porch and I want a big yard where I, we can have barbecues and stuff. Lord, you know. But I don't. I, you know, I, I just can't stand my neighbor. <laughs> There's some people like that. <laughs> There's some people like that. I promise you that. Pastor David said, God knows what we need before we ask him. He knows what we need. He knows everything about us. He knows, like I said, he knows our thinking before we even thought. Prayer is not uh, only asking God for something, but dialogue between you and God. That, listen, people say, I can't, how, do, how can I talk to God? I can't see him. Praying is the communication that to God. This is how we talk to him through prayer. <laughs> amen. We can pray. Amen. You know, you can talk to him regularly, Lord, you know, like you talking like me and Pastor Carl are talking now, but but when you when you get into a seriousness of the spirit, you know, you get into praying, that's really communing with him. That's really conversating with God. You know, that's really conversating with him. Or when you're sitting alone and you having a thought on your mind with just you and him, you know, that's when you really can hear. You know, uh, when you when you're really praying and talking or sitting back in a quiet uh, spot somewhere, that's that's really where that's that's really where where we get uh, uh, a, a a a a a a answer from God, a, a, a answer. But uh, but let me go on. Let me get back to Pastor Carl. Uh, Mother Angel, Pastor Angel said God has everything we need. That's so true. You know why he got everything? You know why he got everything we need, uh, listeners and viewers? He got God got everything we need because he created everything. <laughs> God created everything. Without God is nothing created, nothing made. <laughs> Amen. Without God, there's no stars in the heavens. There's no sun, no moon. <laughs> Amen. With there's with, without God, there's no sea. There's no water. There's no water to drink because our body needs water to survive. You know, without God creating it, we won't have it. You know, with God, without God planting the trees in the fall out here in the world, how could we build houses and put the frames up unless we have wood? How can we write on paper unless we have wood? How do we get tissue and paper without wood? 
You understand what God provided all these things? And he, matter of fact, you wouldn't even have the wisdom that you got without him. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yes. You wouldn't even have the thinking process of the of the of the functioning of your mind without even he giving you something to think about. <laughs> Come on. If the enemy could give you something to think about, <laughs> some to go cut somebody out and, you know, go go out there and stir something up, you know. If the enemy could give you that, you could can you just think about what God gives us in, in our mind? <laughs> he gives us the, the, the mind and the vision to do different things. You know, everybody in this country is not a barber. <laughs> but God has blessed these hands of mine to be, be able to, to, to mold people and transform people's uh, hair and, and facial hair. And they look like a different person. But then God created those that are, that are uh, morticians. Those that are handle the dead, those that are uh, 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 prepare the dead to to find a rest in the grave. You know, everybody got his specific duty. Come on, somebody. I, I, I you know, it, that's military men. Pastor was in the military. Everybody ain't ain't designed or made up to be in the military. Come on. So God created us all. Go ahead, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Brother. Um, I, I'm, for some reason, I'm just great. Um, I'm Yes. But I have a rule with the spirit. So this is um Matthew 18 and 20. And everybody knows this scripture very well. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. Yes. There I am in the midst of them. I'm in the midst of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
fire came down, Pastor. So we can't disregard something that's been and crammed in the You know what I'm saying? It's been out. Like, Pastor Reverend, I'm Pastor Reverend, I'm saying, 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 I'm
then, then, then everything gonna be well because hey, hey, if they check out of here, guess what? <laughs> Hallelujah! They get something. They get a new body. Come on. John saw saw a new body. Come on. So we got to believe that. But here's the word of God in Matthew 14. And and let's let's look at 14. And Jesus went forth and he saw the multitude and he was moved with compassion towards them. You see, when you pray, when you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus, I'm trusting and believing that you're going to heal just like you healed the man at the well, just like you cured the man at the tomb. Just like you, you, you spoke to Lazarus, and and, and and even though he was stinking dead for three days, he he walked up out of that tomb because you have power. Now, God, I believe that you have power, and so we believe that you're gonna be able to heal our children. Not, not you, you can see when people say heal my children, you see your children running around, you see your children up and down the street. You say they ask them, ask them, uh, 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 to heal their children. We're asking God to heal their their spiritual man. See, that's a, that's another thing. When you're talking about here healing, it, it don't necessarily have to be uh, the physical man. It could be. It has to be the spiritual man. The spiritual man, because like I said, you know, when your people are sick or or people are, are, are seem like they're on their deathbed, you pray that God has touched the spirit, <laughs> that they spirit. Because guess what? They they can't move <laughs> like they used to. But it's something about God that, 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 that allows a person that can stay on a sick bed or death bed, they can still hear. <laughs> they can still hear. They might not can move, but they can still hear. And that's why you got to minister to that spirit. <laughs> you, you know, you minister to that spirit. That's what you have to do. You have to talk to that spirit. And so, uh, 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 so here Jesus went forth. He saw the multitude and he was moved with compassion toward them. And this right here ought to get you in joy and healed. They're sick. He healed their sick. He saw the multitude. So there was, a, there was some people that was there that had some sick with them because he said that, that he had compassion towards them and healed their sick. There was people in the land that weren't sick, but there, they, they, there was some that they knew could have been a neighbor, could have been a, a brother, a sister, a child, you know, a, a son or daughter. You know, and, and so they, 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 they went to a healer and, and they cried out. See, that cry is praying. That cry is praying. Come on. Crying is praying. Amen. Ain't no perfect way to pray. You know, just, you know, you got to just formulate. It, 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 it ain't no, ain't no special way. Sometimes you got to get down with it. Sometimes you just got to just be bloodshot, red eyes, just tears everywhere to a point that you can't even hardly cry no more. Come on. Oh boy, that moves the very heart of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you right now. But if you pray to pray to him, it moves his heart. He have compassion now on you because you don't call on him. Amen. All he wanted to do is, is, is to wake us up. He said, God said, I, I, I have an expected end. Uh, 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 I want to have thoughts of peace and of love. You know, God wants to give us an expected end. He, 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 don't, he, want, he don't want his wrath on us. Amen. God said he don't want his wrath on us. So we pray, say, Lord, forgive me for every infirmity that I have. Lord, th this is the way I am. Lord, I, I make some mistakes. I sin some time. I, I, I don't do everything right. But, Lord, I, I need you to clean me and fix me. I, 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 I can't do it by myself. And when you begin to do that, when you begin to do that, God will touch your very life. Now, here's some things. Here's some, th here's some, here's some that God knows. Because you don't you don't said the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. You don't pray and pray to pray the same prayer, and yet you have reneged on every time you don't pray. You say, Lord, if you would just heal my son, I promise. And you made that promise, and then see God healed and brought your son home, but then yet you still want to go out there and destroy our families. You wanna you wanna keep mess started. You wanna continue to gossip, but but yet you say, Lord, I, I promise I will stop talking about people <clears throat> if you heal my son, if you get him out them streets, I, I promise I'm gonna be better. And for a little while you do. And then you renege. And you get back out there talking again. 
You know, there's some people out here that done prayed. They done came and said, you know, I, I'm backslid. I, you know, I want to be right. I want to get baptized. I, I want to get back on the choir. I want to do this. But they don't want to have a commitment to God. They, you ain't making a commitment to the pastors of the church. You making a commitment to God. And, and, and you say this, but yet you still want to hang with the same road dog that you you are trying to stay away from and clean yourself up. And they still are full of the world and partying and drinking and screwing and doing all of these things. But yet you call yourself want to change and you want to sing again and you want to be baptized and all of this stuff. And, and, and you now you done went back out there doing the same thing you was, but worse. The skirt is that you that you did bring down decent enough that it won't show on everything. Then it's it's higher than the one that it was when you was out there in the first place. You out here showing all of yourself. You you showing all of yourself, but yet you pray the prayer and God already knew you weren't serious about it. And then you get mad with the people when they say, "Oh, them folks down there, they got something against me. They don't trust me. They they so judgmental." No, you the one that you the one that's doing it. You're the one that's doing it. Nobody making you. Go ahead, Pastor. No, I'm just saying, we looking at your Yeah, but here's the thing, Pastor. You know, they come, and I'm not saying don't come, but I'm saying when somebody give you some strong medicine that, that's really good for you, first thing you want to say is they judging you. When they tell you that you are, you know, uh, when, you, when you've been going to church a while and then you're still sitting up there and people can see your underwear, your panties. And and yet you get mad because somebody talking about this, this what you wear. You ain't you ain't you ain't got converted yet. You ain't you 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 still ain't there yet. Because get, if you really want to change, then then sometimes you got to got to suck up to the word. If the word steps on my feet, then dog on it. I got to accept and eat this roll. I got to eat it. I got to eat it. That's what we got to do. Some things that, that God will show me by myself. If I did something wrong to somebody or mistreated somebody and I come back and I be, God will show me something in this word. And now I got, I, I was like, no, I feel, I got the shame face on. That's, that's being commune with them. You know, that's being in commune with them. You, you know, but people praying, but, but you, you're not serious about the prayer. You're just doing it for the moment out of the feeling. You know, pastor, that's another thing, pastor. A lot of people are just praying out of emotion. Because then you see the people that come is just an emotion because that's the, the emotion of, of people. They praying that they come in and pray. They come in and shout. But yet before they get to their car, they don't cut somebody out. They don't cuss the deacon out. They don't they don't say something about the pastor. They, they said, I can't stand the first lady. But yet you don't pray. You want you want it prayer. You want it this prayer. But God ain't heard it now because you don't you don't messed it up. Now you got to start back over. You got to do the first works over again. You know, you got to go back home again. You got to go through all of that. In. Can you imagine? All of us have done it. Had to go back over again and over again and over again until we finally realized, like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Something, the light bulb finally got to come on. It, it, it got to come on. You know, you're praying a prayer, but you still, you know, we, we, something, something got to come on. When is the light bulb going to come on? Go ahead, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Right. Hey, I like that, Pastor. Him. Nor did he know 
love them because they are spiritually discerned. So, my people can pray, Pastor. They can pray. But if you can't spiritually discern things, then you might be lost, Pastor. Because we're just saying the Spirit teaches you all things that no man can teach you. So, some things you only going to get from the Spirit, Pastor. Right. How many times in the Bible have we heard the men of God say, I would push the word in the Spirit? I would draw the way in the Spirit. God took me up and showed me the business in the Spirit. So, what does that tell you? You got to be spiritual. Right. You just can't just be walking around. No, you got to be spiritual being. Right. Well, we. Some things God put in the Spirit. Right. Some things, uh, I think of what they say. Well, I said earlier, some things you pray for that you're not ready for, and like I said, you are misusing or abusing. You know why? Because you're not in the spirit. How many people say when you go to church, God will tell you something, and then to be in the spirit, and then it, if you would say, oh, oh, yeah, that's confirmation. Can you still hear me, Pastor? Yeah, I hear you. Pastor, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Then we had a little bridge there. That you must be hitting on me. No, no, no. That, that was me, Pastor. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. But you were being in church, right? And then you will hear something. And how many of us say, oh, man, that's confirmation? That's spiritual stuff. Wait a That's spiritual. You got to be able to walk in the spirit and pray in the spirit. You got to be connected in the spirit. So we can get understanding of some things. So we can get understanding of some things. Amen. Amen, amen Pastor. Amen. And Amen. Amen. Pastor. Now I was just testing something out about the feedback that we, you know, we was experiencing a little bit of that. But I, I know it'll it'll clear up once you get that headset, no problem. But yeah, you know, uh well, you know, we got to realize this we are spirit. You know, we we looking at each other as human, but 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 behind this, if we can look past the skin, look past our appearance, you know, it, it, it's a spirit on the inside that that when we die, that that spirit gonna can still talk. That spirit gonna still you know go on. But you know, uh, Pastor made a made a point, and I'm gonna close out. Uh, Pastor made a point about what type what type of uh, fruit are we carrying? Well, you know, what what spirit give you your fruit your fruit that you got? You know, and the enemy can give you give you some fruit too. <laughs> he can give you the the, the the lust of the world, his eyes of the eyes, and puffed up arrogance. He give you all that stuff. You know, the envy, the strife. He gives you that spirit. But God don't give you that spirit. God don't want us to envy and strife. He don't want me to envy and strife towards Pastor Carl. You know, he don't want me to he don't want me to end, uh, 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 to try to set him up and do on me. And that that ain't the spirit that God wants to give me. He can give me that. So, so we got to know what kind of spirit in your, so, so yeah, you know, sometimes people, you know, you know, I, I think about situations and how, you know, we praying for folk, we in folks corner, but at the end of the day, when, when you stop doing for them, they, they treat you like, like secondhand, like trash, like, or like you never did anything for them, you know, or, or now they going to, now they going to come against you. You know, this is people that you're supposed to be helping, and this is the people that want to change. They want to change, but yet they don't want to change. You know, they still want to be the same way, and then now they out. Now they out worse than what they were because the the way they are in the spirit, the fruit that they had. But going back to pr- talking about the power of prayer, uh, I'm ended up with we, you know that's the whole conversation tonight, and we we kind of you know followed along how how the uh, the flow went but the spirit of of prayer is is a uh, is powerful uh i'm reminded to let you know that 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 the children of israel you know when they when they was hungry and they didn't have food you know god god heard the heard that prayer he heard the cry he said i hear your cry that means i heard you praying i heard heard you heard you talking and and, and next thing you know he be, he began to give them something to eat by allowing manna to fall from heaven. Come on, somebody. God to provide it for the need. And there's some and God will provide for, for our need. You know, look at the food pantries. Food pantries back in the 90s. It ain't hardly, I mean, it was it, it was it was it was it was it was limited ministries 
across this nation, there were certain ones that had, that had a food uh, pantry back in the nineties. Now you got every seem like every church got a got a got some food that they can give to people. Look at God is providing, you know. But I want to talk about the power of prayer and this last thing. And a lot of you women on here have read it. You know this sister. She was she was looked upon because she was barren. She was looked upon as less than as a nobody because she was at that childbearing age, but yet she couldn't conceive. You know, I'm going to talk about Hannah tonight. First Samuel, the second chapter, that verse one. It says, and Hannah prayed. It was something about how she prayed. Come on. And she didn't have no fancy way to do it. <laughs> and Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoiced in the Lord. First, she she, she acknowledged that I'm going to rejoice in you because regardless at the end of the day, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to reverence who you are. At the end of the day, my 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 my, my wound is still barren. My, my wound is dried up. I, I cannot give my husband a seed. And, and yet, <laughs> first, Lord. <laughs> My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy. Come on. Oh, you talking to God now. None holy. There ain't nobody in this nation that can supply my need, God, but you. God, there is none holy as the Lord. Come on. Woo. For there is none besides thee. Oh, I'm talking. You're talking good now. Neither is there any rock like our God. <laughs> because, see, you know, you can you can imagine that we can't move physically a cliff or uh, a uh, uh, mountain. <laughs> but with a bomb, a bomb can take down a mountain. <laughs> but one thing about a bomb, it can't take what it can't take God out. <laughs> I uh, know nuclear blast can take our God out. <laughs> Ain't nothing they can do. <laughs> Amen. They can't put no chains in God on God's feet. <laughs> I'm so glad about it that he's a rock <laughs> that, that, that can never be moved. I'm so glad that, 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 that he is the holy of holy. Come on. He will hear our cry. <laughs> Amen. All we got to do is just cry. And, and, and that's sometimes all he want to get our attention. Have you imagined? Can you imagine God created all of us with different sizes and different shapes and different um, languages? And all he wants us to do is just acknowledge him. God said, I want to provide everything. I want to make your life so just so easy and pleasant. I want you to just look at the, the flowers in amazement and think of all the beauty that I can that I can store in your life. This is what God said. He's just looking down and, and said, I just want to be a blessing to them. I just want them to just enjoy what I created for them. Can you imagine God created this world for us? Can you imagine? He said, you know what? I want to, I'm going to create a world and I'm going to create everything in it and I'm a, and I, I just I just want to be amazed of my creation. I just want to look down at my creation and say I am just so pleased. Come on. That's what God is wanting to that's what God wants to do. Amen. That's what God wants to do. But I'm but Hannah here was, was at a, a place in her life. She she had situations in her life. She you know she had to go to God on occasions. Amen. The man of God thought she was drunk when she was crying out there at the temple house but she was yet praising the Lord through her turmoil. Huh? Come on. She said. She said, "No, my Lord, my my my, my heart is sorrow." And she she was investing the spirit. Hallelujah. She won't drunk. But I guarantee you, when people come to the church and there's a really an anointing that will flow down in the house, and people will get out themselves and really cry upon the Lord, they would think we drunk too. <laughs> they would think we tore from the flow up. Amen, Pastor. If you want to go ahead on and do the, uh, if you want to do uh, the pick the tonight pick. Oh, Minister Mile? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. I'll have to go with her tonight. Yes, you, yes, you got something else, but that's my pick. 
No, no, no. We'll go with that. We'll go with that, Doc. Minister Mile, if everybody's still on here, all of you that's still on, if you would just throw up some hearts, some claps. Tonight, our special guest uh, uh, winner, uh, special uh, viewer winner, uh, Minister Mile. Amen, Veronica Mile. Amen. God bless you uh, not tonight, pick. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, everybody. Let's give her a clap. Amen. Minister Mile, let me put that up here. Let me put let me put that up here, Doc. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We just thank God we're working through new system. God, I tell you, see that's that's the thing about we praying because what you know one day we're gonna have our radio our radio and television station, but at the same time when this when the government and the local government closed us down and said you know what social no social distance you got to have social distance you can't be a reside people yada 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 and and then we had some technical issues we still stayed on the task we didn't give up you know a lot of people would say you know what forget it i just give up i just wait but we still stayed strong amen 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 i'm just going to put this up Amen. Amen. I want to put that up. See, I can do certain things on here now that I couldn't do before. So I uh, just wanted to do that. Hold on. There we go right here. All right. There you go. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Listen, we want you guys to tune in next week uh, the same time. The same station, and we definitely want you guys to to. to
Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for all of you to tune in to the Men to Men Talk Back to Talk Show with your radio host, Pastor Nino Aquajan, co-host, Pastor Carl Young. We say God bless you. May heaven smile upon each and every one of you. And until next time, peace.